a one, two, three. Walk that promenade, yeah, we're gonna rock that promenade, be the talk of that promenade, looking for a star drifter, not a shape shifter, lots to do and more to see, sweet sticks from a dumb to tree, oh, what it tease, opportunities, free advice, but not for cheap, oh, gambling wheels, shaded deals, lead me back here to my road, Hello and good evening for this Monday, April 8th, 2024, Star Trek D Space Nine Season 7, Episode 20. The Changing Face of Evil is over, and it has been since 1999. But we're just getting started here in 2024, 25 years later, here on Live Long and Podcast, a live stream here on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, as we continue our ongoing mission to watch every episode of Star Trek D Space Nine and talk about it, review it. Uh, we'll be talking about this for the next hour and then putting a, a rating to this episode we only have six left and uh we're, we got a great panel here once again to, to to uh talk all about this episode here on eclipse day here in the path of totality we got the inimitable kevin millard hello dave hello and good hello. evening kevin and we have the ever pleasant adam woodward hey how are you guys it was a good day we, it was we a get, good day it was a good day it was a good day, but maybe less so for the characters in this episode that we're talking about here tonight. Uh, spoilers, ahoy! But it's 25 years old this episode, so you know. Which, but Adam just saw it for the first time, so who knows? Uh, we're going to be talking here all about it. Um, but uh, the changing face of evil. What happens in this episode, guys? The Defiant is destroyed. R.I.P. The USS Defiant. Nearly made it to the finish line. Nearly made it to the end of the series, but did, not quite um what what else uh well uh the the ranjin um right the kaiwin killed yeah. him she opened up the, the pa wraith book the fire demons are coming out it's you know the rapture <laughs> is upon us so watch out for that oh and by the way earth was attacked by the by the breen the new best friends here of the dominion and uh you know we see san francisco in flames this the, the golden gate bridge destroyed Adam, how was this episode here for you? Okay, fantastic. Kevin, I do not get the thing that action doesn't make a good episode because that was <laughs> awesome. I love that episode. Uh, you, you know, I'm really happy to be here talking with this attitude that I have tonight because, you know, we went from Star Trek Radio Theater last night and then and then I went to watch that. I went to bed happy. It was good. Well, that's, that's great. You know, and speaking of, yes, we did do a Star Trek radio theater last night. We did a conundrum from the Star Trek, the next generation. Uh, question here from Ensign Norman saying, conundrum was hilarious, guys. Did Kevin rehearse the lot with that candle? <laughs> More than you care to know. <laughs> but that was, that. I think that was an improv uh, in the moment. Uh, or, or No, but maybe it was Davin threw that out there with the candle. It was Davin. It wasn't me. Yeah, and then you just I was still it. trying to figure out a way to bring in Ronan when he said it. So Yeah, exactly. Um and uh of course we have Sam here. He got his black belt in Taekwondo here on the Hey, way. way to go, Sam. Way Congratulations, go, Sam. Sam. Yeah. Um if you want to get promoted to Ensign Sam, you're gonna to have to sign up for the Patreon. Uh look at us, <laughs> look up us on uh support us on Patreon. No, if you're lieutenant junior grade, you know, you, you can go all the way up to uh, commander, I believe, if you'd like. Um, but yes. Okay. But back to the episode, guys. Kevin, how was this one for you? The changing face oh, I, of evil. I love it. I love it. This is peak Kai Win. I, yeah. uh, I, I love all that stuff. And um, and yeah, it's actiony, <laughs> but there's there's I, I'm okay, Adam, with action. It just also has to have story. It can't. Well, this one had both. Just, it it, it was had both. both. In yeah. spades, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the space battle we get in this episode is kind of quick. Um, 
which probably worked to your advantage, Kevin, as you're not like, you don't want those to go on for too long. And this probably felt just right. I was like, oh, like, because yeah. the, the, the Breen kind of like end up dominating the battle very quickly. The Defiance destroyed. They're at the will of the Dominion. The founder is just licking her lips, waiting to take over the entire Alpha Quadrant. What else is going on in this episode? Oh, there's a whole plot line with Ezri and Bashir. And you have you know. the Cardassians. What's oh, yeah, the Cardassian that? resistance. They, oh, yeah. they destroy the cloning facility. The Wayun 9 might be the last Wayun because they can't make an, a new one. And uh, Oh, what, that's you know. so great. He picked that on purpose. <laughs> yeah, like there was there was a, a lot happens in this episode um, <laughs> compared to the, the previous, what, I guess. We're in part four now of this nine-part finale. Uh, never you, done before or since. The one thing, and we'll, we'll talk more when we get there, but is... The actual, the one thing that surprised me actually was the actual la lack of enthusiasm when they saw, um, the, oh, what's his name, broadcast, you know, the intention to to resist. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, who am I thinking? Yeah. Anyway, it was, it, but anyway, Jay, let's start. Let's, because this is a good. Okay, good we'll episode. get into it. Kevin, what does your shirt say? Stand with My space. shirt says after school say. It's, uh, it's a, uh, an after school program in the States. There you go. Uh, it's far, it's how far gone is she when she decides to still be in league with Dukai? Like, yeah, like, um, Kai Win, like, flirting with evil. <laughs> Like, well, I can't do this. Okay, maybe. She finds out it is Ducat in this episode, too. And, you know, she's like, oh, no, you're the worst. Oh, well, maybe I'm good with this because now we figured out how to open up the, the fire the paw race and maybe I can have all that power I've always wanted. So uh, that could work. Could work, Guys, let's talk about this episode. Oh, we could even, you know, look, do the screenshots this way because we have a screen open tonight. Um, well, maybe we'll go big to start. Um Ezri and Worf return. Uh, I guess they, they came back in a Cardassian ship or something yep. um, because it wasn't a runabout anymore. Uh, and they come back and they're greeted at the airlock by Julian and O'Brien. Big smiles. Are big smiles. But like, you know, Cisco's not here yet. Uh, Kira's not here. Others are not present as well. Uh, Worf has been gone for a while. Like Worf, Worf has yeah. been missing. And Ezri almost just as long. Um, but you know, we see here that uh, you know they they, we, they need to know all about the Breen attack because Cisco does eventually show up. Tell me about. She's like, I'm sorry, I stole the runabout, and I went to go get Worf. And she's like, he's like, never mind that. What's going on with this Breen stuff? You know. Um, and they were like, well, we don't really have a lot of answers. We just know that the Dominion's teamed up with the Breen. And uh, I like when she when she she said, you know, they were the ones asking the questions. They were the they were more yeah. interested in asking questions and get, in giving us answers. So um, and then there's kind of some flirty stuff here with Esri and oh. Julian in the beginning. I could do without it, honestly. Uh, uh, even Worf is giving the looks because Worf now has gone from wanting to uh, you know he was kind of in a thing with Ezri but they've decided to be friends and now he's more like the uh, a relationship advisor now to Ezri. I I love their new relationship. I do wish they had done this sooner and had more of this. Yeah. This I love this episode for their their banter in this episode is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, I, I I don't he's like he plays with toys. He's a toy man, <laughs> you know. Like this is the guy you want, you know. Um but then we get the call over the comm here in the opening teaser, guys. Earth has been attacked by the Breen. Dun, dun, dun. dun. That, that's our setup, which was, a, I think, a pretty strong opener. Um, you know, there's, you know, because we got the, the crew back together. And the opening shot after, after the credits is the Golden Gate Bridge torn up here in San Francisco. Uh, Starfleet Academy not looking uh, too uh, good. You know, not completely destroyed, but it's, uh, yeah. they've, you know, it's a rough day there on Earth uh, in the 24th century. You know, we get our title card as we see that we're just looking at this on the monitor from the Cisco and Martok perspective up here in the office. And, and, and Martok says, even we never tried to attack Starfleet <laughs> Academy and Federation headquarters like these brains. And, and I'm like, why? Why would you not try that? There's never any ships near Earth. Ever. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like in Star Trek Five, where they're like, he's like, surely there's other ships. And he's like, not really. No. <laughs> you know, we're going to have to send you to, to do all this. Um, but yeah, the Breen are kind of far away from Earth. Like, it's it's kind of confusing to me because, like, the you know, the Dominion is kind of centered on Cardassia, which is very close to Bajor. And it feels like this war should be more in the vicinity of, um, you know, deep, the word Deep Space Nine is, which yeah. it's called Deep Space Nine because it's in deep space, it's not close to Earth. 
you know, that's kind of the whole idea. So for the brain to kind of turn around and attack Earth, um, I'm like, well, we know that they can get there. I think it's like it's a week away or two weeks away, you know, in a ship. Uh, uh, like on a, uh, So it's not the furthest place they can go, but it's it's not around the corner either. So the brain right. att have attacked. And so that's, you know, and, and, but, the, but and how do you instill fear and, 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 and well, fear? You know, you attack somebody at home. Whether you right. lose a lot of people or whatever, it, may, it doesn't matter how in, intensive it was. It was just they, they've created a, they've done something else now. They've done something new. This is a new, uh, we're going to have a new gauntlet, I guess is the word. Well, that's, yeah, exactly. And um, there's, there's, a, there's a new threat to this that, that, that we ha haven't felt yet. You know, of course, everyone watching the show is a human and lives on Earth and is always going to connect to this moment, right? Um, and then we see, like, from the, on Cardassia, uh, from the Dominion's perspective, they, we actually see the San Francisco Bay Area and see all these red targets and, like, we even talk about how glorious this was, you know. Now, we told that the Breen were destroyed. Like, they, it's not like they attacked and got away. More, they were, like, the Federation managed yeah. to, like, Starfleet managed to catch up and eventually annihilate them. But before they did, it was, it was a lot of damage. Um, and, um, you know, and so the Breen are here, they're, they're going hard, uh, and, uh, Weyoun is loving it. This is a great time for him. <laughs> you know, he's can't wait to tell the founder. Uh, we see here Damar not looking too, as drunk and as depressed. He's now, you know, of course they talked about in the fun facts in the last episode that they've changed his lighting and, uh, you know, sort of how he looks in the makeup and he looks yeah. more heroic now, now that he's become like this resistance fighter who's like pretending to work with the Dominion. Um, and uh and now going ahead so you know the whole thing with, and i think he tells the bring guy he's like yeah when we started this war they told us we were the best the, the founders did and you know, the dominion and now uh you guys are the are, are the great ones but after we win the war uh you, you should probably uh not take you know take too much comfort with them uh never turn and, your back on wayun yeah Right. Well, the, the, the Romulans say never turn your back on a brain. But I say, yeah, never turn your back on the Dominion either. Like, well, don't there's a lot of people you can't turn your back on. Um, anyway, so there's one right this, there. Yeah. Coming up here, we have Cisco coming into his quarters after this back on D Space Nine. Cassidy Yates trying to cook up his food his pro his, his his grown produce, which, you know, is not replicated. And she's burning it all. You know, uh, Adam, how did you feel about about what she was trying to do here? I can very nice of her, but I could do without this scene as well. I, you know, I, right. Well, the the peppers, I I couldn't help but go. You know, peppers. Nobody touches to my peppers. It took me three months to grow them. Three months to grow them. Why is everybody so bad at growing things in the future? <laughs> Like, why do they all act like it's the hardest thing to do to put a seed in the ground and wait? Because they have replicators in the future, <laughs> I suppose. Um, and, uh, you know, it's uh, but Cassidy tried to cook to cheer him up, you know, but then secedes the apron to him, um, you know, and he doesn't want her going on any cargo runs in this war. Uh, you know, and this becomes a conflict in the episode where he actually interferes with her, uh, you know, duty because now that the brain are apparently in the war, the war is actually um, dangerous. I guess I get that there was, I guess, a sense in the war that like Cardassia and the, and the Dominion were going to lose this war. Like, like, like they had kind of flipped it over sooner or later. Um, that was going to happen. But now that the brain have come into the conflict, now that's all in doubt. And now the war could shift back the other way. You know, um, yeah. So then we hear, we see uh, back on Cardassia, there's a scene with Damar and this new character we meet who's like a Cardassian gull or legged or something that, you know, they and they end up like talking about how, you know, they were happy when they first joined the Dominion. They thought they were going to be like the bosses of the Alpha Quadrant. And, you know, now they're just, they're conquered people in their own land. We, we also learned that 7 million Cardassians have died in this war. Yeah. Right. That's a lot. You know, um, well, 500,000 in one go, right? Right, just a like lot. that. Martok <laughs> took that out last week. Um, and so, yeah. and they're still going hard, they're kind of like become the um, like the the cannon fodder here of the Dominion yeah. in a lot of ways, right? Even though the, the Jemadar are cloned and genetically engineered and sort of you know, they can they're bred just to fight, but there's the Cardassians are still in this fight and uh, and, and not doing super well, um. And so they, but they're mostly talking about the resistance. They're forming this Cardassian resistance movement to go against the Dominion. So that we could kind of interweave with that plot line. 
And then we're also on Bajor in this episode. We're going everywhere. Uh, on Bajor, we're, we're, we're dealing with Kai Wynn, who's, uh, you know, she's she's studying the texts and, the you know, this Ranjin guy. What's his character's name? Um, uh, Sobar? Or Sobar? Like yeah, Solbor. It's Solbar. played by James Otis. Um, what's that? I love all this stuff. I Kai Wynn is one of my favorite characters. Yeah. It, well, this it, guy is just so unimpressed with her. He's like, really? And then like Ducat shows up. He's like, hey, Solbor, I'll have my breakfast on the patio. Uh, you know, let's get going here. And uh, and you know, he's just a like a supposed to be just a civilian, just like a nobody. Oh yeah, he's... that's great. When he walks in and just starts barking commands, it's so oh, he, good. he's, it's so he's very God. comfortable. He's very comfortable. Ducat now. loves being in his palace now. He's like, it's like he's the king of Bajor, yeah. right? You know, it's like he married the queen uh, and, uh, and he's right in there now, you know, and this is before. Well, this is before they even know he's Ducat. They still just think he's this 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 Bajoran guy who's super confident. That's all they think about this guy right now. <laughs> you know, they don't even know he's Ducat at all. We know he's Ducat. But uh, and that's what's kind of like so fun. Some of some of these scenes, Marco Limo is just chewing it up. You know, and and they do work well with each other. They would never really uh, had any scenes coming into this, and uh, yeah. you know, it, like it's it's coming out. I just want to also comment on this particular image we have up here in this scene here with Ducat and Win. Uh, this backdrop that's supposed to be Bajor is clearly just like a faded looking painting or something, a matte painting that's not quite holding up yeah. in the special effects department. Uh, Twenty five years later, but you know that's a minor grievance. Um, Adam, how are, how are these scenes? How's this plot line for you working? This uh, this has got better for me, um, especially this episode here. Uh, you know, I, I think that he has manipulated her so well, you know, and and uh, she's just falling into the palm of his hand. Like everything he wants her to do is just happening. You can just see yeah. Right. And she's like, when am I going to get my power? When am I, uh, you know, you told me. And he's like, don't worry about it. It's happening. You know, <laughs> and, and uh, we have to get into the fire caves, let out the paw race. And she, she's she's kind of hesitant about all that. But he's like, don't worry, we're going to destroy Bajor. But there'll be a new Bajor. If you yeah, this is like pretty major. Like, you know, as he's describing this, I'm going, what do you mean destroy Bajor? It's going to be gone. It sounds like it. Most of it. You know, yeah. it sounds except like the chosen be, ones, Dave. Except the chosen ones. Like this is like literally like what they're doing here is hell, and the like the devil and and the demons are going to be released from hell. It will be hell on not on Earth but on Bajor, and uh, I, and that's what I loved here. With. I loved here when she says, "But what about the prophecies?" And he just goes, "What about them?" Like. <laughs> What like, yeah, why would you believe that you're with the power race now? But he's right, like, like that's pro that's like, their side's <laughs> propaganda, and from his point of view, it makes sense, right? Yeah, you know, he's like, Yeah, that's just what the the prophets say, but you don't have like it's there's the the coast of Mojin is gonna have is which is like the, the devil's Bible is gonna have it all, right? Yeah, it's like the apocalypse, they're bringing down the apocalypse and a new era. Okay, the next scene is up at Quarks, where we first see this is the first time we see this, I guess, in the show is this uh model of uh the Alamo because it's, it's like their their holodeck program. Is this uh, historically accurate? I don't know. I, I was there a year ago, yeah. It, I mean, no, I mean, but actually, according to the d design, there for sure, it's just what's left now is not much like that, but um, right. So I got, I'm what, just astounded by this fascination of the Alamo. This is this is I'm sure it ties into some battle. It's like a hopeless battle, a battle you can't yeah. win, right? So yeah. it's because it was like a couple hundred against a few thousand. Um, yeah. and that's the whole idea here. So that we're, we're told that they're always in the holodeck simulation, but this is them actually trying to figure it out, not in the holodeck, but actually out in the practical world, even though they could do this in a hollow sweep, but they like doing it in the bar, which I actually kind of like, you know, versus like them doing this at Vix, which I could see them doing. Uh, this you is know? better. This is better. Well, and that, yeah, it sort of brought their geekiness out onto the in for everybody to see. You know. Yeah. Uh, Quark but shows up. This is funny with their step time. Well, if you just made the wall complete, or move the cannons here, we would have. Yeah, won. do this or that. And they're like, well, it's not the battle of the Alamo anymore. And and, and Bashir doesn't care. He just wants to win. And then, <laughs> and then, then Miles O'Brien goes, then be sent to Anna. 
he always wins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, they get really upset with Quirk for almost putting a drink on it. They're saying, you know, he, he says, what's wrong with you? Like earth's been attacked. And they're like, I don't know. We've been working hard trying to get ready for the Breen attack, but this is us being distracted. This is just something for us to put our minds on when it's a war and we can't be worried about it. He likes his toys. That's right. Norman. Um, <clears throat> He doesn't uh will Brian have a family here or is or are they on the planet? Well, um they're with Sabar. Unclear. <laughs> you know. Is that do I still have you, it? You, you still an nice bum. That's the wrong one. Um <laughs> he worked 14 hours on the day and now he's doing this, you know. Hold on. I Sorry, uh, sorry about that. I had to figure out which one it was. Go back to Bajor and your plants and Sabar. See if I care. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and then we then we go to the upper level of Quarks in the next portion here, where Esri and uh, Worf are, you know, are talking, and Worf's just like, "Really, this is the guy, Bashir?" You know, but his friend yeah. O'Brien is also playing with this toy, but he's forgiving. He, you know, he's not criticizing O'Brien. He's just like, "No, Bashir sucks." specifically you know he is a child he That's is a child favorite. he plays with toys he is a child he gets excited playing with toys yeah. <laughs> the way he says that play with toys uh and as he's like it's, it's a mo it's not a model that's what happens when you share your toys it's not oh. a toy it's a model built to scale the model built to scale so just remember that. Um, so yeah, she she um, he says it, it's pointless too because he's he, he even gets into like the battle uh, theory part of it. He's like they can't win the battle yeah. of the Alamo. He's like she's like do you want to go down there and play with the toys? He's like no, I don't. <laughs> that would not be, you know, a lot of exchanges. Here. Yeah, I like this. I like I, I found their like I said. I wish they had done this earlier so we could have had more. More of more of maybe Worf teasing her about Bashir and and stuff. It's pretty funny. Yeah, but you know what? Coming back to, that, I, I think that Worf would have actually enjoyed seeing a battle laid out like that. And, yeah, you think he would like get into that? And you know, yeah. he's, for, oh, like, he, he's not... he, I, I think that's the whole thing. He probably is, and he's just holding back and cutting up Bashir anyway. Yeah, right. But it's kind of nice here that you have Dax and Worf. Like, even though it's a different Dax. Um, you know, it's it, Dax and Worf talking again in the show, which for most of the seven seasons, they're not doing really. Right. Yeah. So that, I feel like for me, like that's a big dynamic that's missing um, until this. It feels like, you ha it, you know, they're not like the married Dax that they were with Jed's ear. But at least it, you, ha you have that dynamic back a little bit, yep. which is nice. Um, so back on Cardassia, Damar is like doing his secret maneuvers. We see here that like we even the boss who shows up behind him at work, seeing what he's doing on his monitor, and then he changes like the screen to oh, I'm looking <laughs> at the battle things with the brain or whatever. You know, uh we even eventually figures out that Damar has got his confidence back. And look at uh, you, you've got something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that he and we and, and Damar isn't drinking anymore. He's stopped drinking. He's more focused here. Lots calling. Um, yeah, and Wayun thinks it's because because uh, now Damar is like, yes, the Dominion. <laughs> we're we're back. Yeah, he's, you're just glad that we're winning the war again, aren't you? He's like, I totally. <laughs> that is totally what I'm about here um it's going so well we're a big happy family and uh and, and, and so damar is playing wayun here and it's working beautifully i guess uh back on bajor we got Solbor here who shows up with the evil book the like the coast emojin it's called uh why do you want this evil book eminence don't worry about it she says just give me the book <laughs> He's like, it's pretty evil. This is a pretty evil book. No one's looked at this book in 700 years. And she's like, are you going to give me the book or not? And then eventually Ducat gets in there. He's like, give him your, she, he said, she said, give him the, the book, give her the book. 
and uh, you know he gets up in Solber. Solber is actually trying. I guess he's one of the unsung heroes of Deep Space Nine. <laughs> he actually tries <laughs> to stand up to this, with this evil plot. But uh, you know he's just too low ranking. He can't do anything about it here. Uh, so he eventually he gets ordered out of the room by both of them. And yeah, I think in this scene he's like, "Who is this guy? Why are you looking yeah. at this stuff now? This is this is sketch. This is totally sketch." But she doesn't want to hear it. She's already converted to the paw wraiths, and she's all about the paw wraiths now. So eventually, they kind of get sober to leave the book. He gives a snooty look and he leaves. I don't know when he. I don't know when exactly he takes the DNA sample from Ducat. Is it when Ducat beats him up later on in the episode? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Um. So so she you know Ducat's there. Let's open up the evil book, which they have a lock and key for, by the way. Um, and we find out. It's a book of nothing. There's no pages filled in. Yeah, I uh, liked this. I liked I liked I liked both of their reactions. Like she was still a believer. She was still like patient and studious and he was just impatient. He's like he brought the wrong book. He, he brought the wrong thing. book. Yeah. <laughs> but she's like no, no he doesn't make those kinds of mistakes. Yeah, the words are here. Just be patient. We can find them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, so we'll figure this out. We just have to, re they have to reveal it themselves to us, she says. And then in the next scene, we go back to Cisco on D space nine, talking to Odo with the security protocols. If there's a brain attack, just then Cassidy Yates shows up to say, Hey, Ben, I've been pulled off freighter duty. What the hell? Uh, they, Odo excuses himself and they use Odo's office to have this conversation where, you know, Cisco's like, yeah, I may have pulled a favor and she doesn't like it she doesn't want to be uh getting special treatment him interfering with her job and he's like come on it's like you know dangerous times she's like i can talk to admiral ross and say can you please not send him you on any dangerous missions and you won't like that too much right uh meanwhile odo is observing this from outside on the promenade um which is funny and then but then um Quark shows up to say, ah, marriage changes everything. That could be you and Kira one day fighting in your office. Your relationship will go from nice lovey-dovey to just bickering. Because that's, I guess that's what Quark thinks marriage is. Um, <laughs> just, I think, obviously, just to mess with Odo. Yeah. Maybe Quark generally believes it. Um, then we go back to Bajor and Kaiwin uh still looking at this empty book i guess other books she's trying to use to, to figure it out soulbor is bringing her more and more books and he's still unhappy with this whole uh what's to cut the cost name anjo angel An angel or something uh like the tension's yeah. building between these two in the <laughs> in the various scenes uh i think I this like is this here when she's like why are you still here yeah She's like, get out. Like, what did she think? He's like, where do you want me to go? Yeah. Oh, the one the thing, I, I love the thing he says, like, uh, to her in this episode. I am but a moon made warm by the light of your sun. I am but a moon made light. You're on Eclipse Day. How fitting. Um, and then she goes back to studying the for the Coast Emojin. Back to D Space Nine, where uh, Ben makes up with Cassidy Yates here with some flowers um also apparently ordered cork cork was bringing champagne or something i can't remember exactly what it was but another gift a bracelet maybe um anyway so so they, they they've uh there she's back on freighter duty and all is right here between ben and cassidy the newlyweds are doing okay uh just then bill ross does show up and he's like the the, the breeder attacking uh the shintaka system there's a battle in shintaka and we had to go. You're going to, you know, he's like, when do I leave? And Cassidy just looks like she knows he could die in the next. He's going into battle. And we see the USS I, Defiance. I, I actually laughed there when when Ben was like, when do I leave? It would have been funny if Ross had been like, well, actually, I've been talking to Cassidy. And um, <laughs> we're going to get you back on this one. <laughs> <laughs> they missed an opportunity for that. Yeah. But no, but it was like, duh, duh, duh. the music gets very serious. And then the, the Defiant uh, getting ready for what will end up being its final voyage. Um, as it's, uh, you know, uh, Nog's basically pacing around the bridge. 
uh, getting tense about the battle, feeling like this could be their time. Uh, eventually, um, Bashir and O'Brien show up arguing about stuff uh, because I think oops, Julian lost the little part of the model. <laughs> of course he did. Yeah. You know, uh, and, uh, my favorite part here was O'Brien when he when he's just uh, you know um, they're like it's nothing, it's nothing. I wouldn't call it nothing. I wouldn't call it nothing. <laughs> you lost that little thing, the little toy. Um, so here, what, it's, like, it's, it's sorry. It's why like is Bashir never. Oh, sorry, Adam. Go ahead. Uh, my question is, why is Bashir going? Is it because they need a medical officer? Uh, yeah, they need a medical officer. It makes sense to bring a doctor, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I, but but he should be in sick bay, not on the bridge, yeah. probably. But right. um, is there a sick bay on this ship? Yeah, small one. Yeah, yeah. small. I, yeah. I, yeah. Um, and so yeah, but they're all they're 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 breaking the tension here. Uh, cure at the helm, which I thought was interesting for the, for the episode. That's what happens when you share your toys. It's not a toy. It's, a it's not a toy. It's a model built to scale. Uh, and of course, Worf here we go. He gets excited playing with toys. Uh, what do you think about this, Esri? What Esri was on communications, apparently, we're told. And here, that's her role on the battle. And then Cisco shows up and it is on. Let's go. And we see the Defiant um, pull out here, goes around the station, and off they are to the battle. Then we go back to Kai Wen, who's sleeping in her chair in her office on Bejor. Um, Solbor shows up to take away the evil book and to clean up. But just then he runs into Dukat uh, as the Bajoran guy in the hallway uh, saying, she's sleeping and she's done with the books. And he's Solbor's like, he tells Solbor, put them back. And he goes, no, you don't talk to me like that. And then Dukat just beats the hell out of him, like punches him. <laughs> like this guy goes down hard. She's like, I've had enough of your insolence. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he just like holds him up. Like, Dukat just like has no problem like throwing this guy around the room. We even see that he's coming, he's like, Oh, I almost like pulled something, like beating the crap out of that guy. And then he shows up here, wakes up Kai Wen. Um, and they're gonna get back to doing evil book stuff. Then we go to Cardassia, and then on Cardassia, it's another scene with Damar and this guy, the Cardassian legate guy, his, his resistance uh, guy. Um, you can see he's pouring himself a lot of canar and 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 um Damar says, No, no more, no more canar for you. We gotta stay, we no gotta more stay for sober. anybody. No more for any Cardassians. But then they say, like, a lot of Cardassians are gonna die in this attack that they're gonna wage on the Dominion and kind of start this Cardassian resistance. And uh, but at least they'll be dying for Cardassia, not for somebody else, which the other yeah. Cardassian agrees with Damar. So that's been that's brewing. Then we see the uh, Weyun's flagship here with uh, the founder. Uh, they're headed towards the battle. The founder says, the more, the merrier. Let's." The, she's so excited for the brain to destroy whatever enemy fleet's going to be at Shintaka. And they're, going, they're coming at this battle hard. Um, we see that you know, we got the Federation, the Klingons, and the Romulans all set to go into this fight. Uh, to defend the system they're already, they already hold at this point. Uh, but there's there's just this tension going into the battle. That this is a different battle. This feels like a different battle because we got the Breen involved now, uh, and the, the, it gets kicking off here pretty, but almost right away. Um, the Defiant gets a few shots off, and they actually manage to actually destroy a couple Breen ships right away too. Like right away, yeah. So it's looking okay initially. It's kind of like this bait and switch here, but as they're coming into the fight, the the Breen finally launched what ends up being this energy dissipator weapon, which ends up being pretty significant, and hits the Defiant and like makes it all electrical or whatever. And apparently, like all the ships, all the ships in the fleet basically get destroyed in this battle. Not just the Defiant. There's nothing they can do. They lose power. They can't break. They can't do anything. Basically, they still have life support, uh, but that's basically it. Um, O'Brien can't manage to do anything with the system. It's like a full system failure. And uh, and then the the Breen just start hammering the ship after that. And uh, I like Kira... I like how quickly the Defiant is destroyed. Like it's yeah, it's normally for a ship like this, they would draw it out, right? Like, yeah, it'd be a long battle, but no, it's like, oh no, this one shot, and then they're just getting pounded till they decide to leave. It's, right, Kira goes so down awesome. at the helm. Wait, wait, wait. Kira does is not the first to go down at all. There's a bunch of them go down. 
A few of them, go, yeah, somebody in the back, but it was mostly like extras, like no one, yeah, no, well, no hero characters go. go well, I mean, here. Julian waits until the major cast member goes. Yeah, down. yeah, she like somebody goes down at the back, <laughs> but he's like, eh, do I want to commit to that, or <laughs> you know, something else could happen here. Somebody important uh, might go down. <laughs> somebody else, yeah, and, and, and the hero I'm, goes down here. I'm the um, chief medical officer. I do not fix ensigns. Yeah. <laughs> right. I have a uh, staff for that. <laughs> I suppose he does. But uh, yeah, Cisco eventually has to give the order to abandon ship here. <clears throat> you know, and they all look around. We can't believe it, you know, and uh, the Defiant is getting destroyed here. Cisco has to look once more time around the bridge. Um, you know, can't believe his, his ship that we've had since season three, right? Beginning of season three, this ship was introduced. Yeah. It finally goes out here. He looks at the bridge. You know, she was a fine ship. But Ryan says, you can't argue with that. Tough um, little ship, Dave. Tough little ship. Tough little ship. But the the escape pods are out here. And we see that the, the Romulan warbirds, all the Klingon ships, the entire fleet has been decimated. As we zoom out here on the Defiance, some really good action. And we see it get just destroyed for good here as the uh, the final shots are fired by the Dominion. Uh, looking here, you know, Weyoun and all them and the founder, they're very pleased with the results. I don't, okay, now, we know that only Weyoun and the Jemadar guy, the first with those little visors, can see. So the founder can't see anything. She's just basically whatever they're telling her is basically yeah. going out here. And she's just like, stoic. Yes. Let's wipe them all out there. Now, they were going to destroy all the escape pods where Weyoun's instinct was, but uh, the founder says, no, I want them all to go back to the Federation uh, scared. Does this move make sense? Or is he, um, is he was she doing this for uh, Odo's benefit because Kira was in those escape pods? No, I don't think so. I, 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 I don't think, think she did that for Odo. Okay. No, I think it's it's classic tactic. I mean, it was she she called it out. We're gonna go let them go back and tell them how scared they were and see what happened. Oh, no my favorite time. thing here, though, my favorite thing is how in the last few episodes how dismissive she is of Wayun about everything. Like yeah. whenever he's like. He's like, you're so wise. She's like, yeah, uh huh, whatever. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she has no time for his. I don't know if she normally would or not. You know, we, it, when most... when she first comes in, she has a lot more patience. I think. Well, I think because she's sick, right? And she's dying, and she yeah. You know, but she's still hell bent on this mission to conquer the the galaxy. You yeah, know? even though she may not live to actually, you know, rule it, which is kind of the weird part about it for me. I think um, also she's probably feeling the effects of not having any other changelings around. Right. Having, having to more... be with solids all the time. Yeah, not having the link. It's driving her a little mad, perhaps. Yeah. Um, back to Bajor in the next scene where uh, Ducat and Kai Win are waking up here. And then uh, Solbor shows up and he goes, It's don't you see this evil man who showed up one day? <laughs> Don't you get who Don't it you is? see the face of evil? Don't you see the face <laughs> of evil? Of course I had. I had a sample of his DNA no, sequence. He's not even a Bajor. He's a Cardassian. Look at him. Don't you recognize the face of your enemy? It's gone, Ducat. Oh, it can't be. It can't be. <laughs> Well, okay, but like, did you guys really need a DNA test to know this was Gold Ducat? Like, apparently they did. Apparently, like, I'm a little like, come on, like, you know, um, it's. I think you can still tell who people are, you know. Yeah, like he was the leader of the occupation. The voice he's would give him away to every Bajoran. <laughs> he's not like an anonymous like Cardassian. He's like one of the most famous people on Bajor. You know, infamous yeah. actually, right? And so, uh, you know, it, it, it's it's something. Happens. And then Kai Wins really having doubts about this past. She's down here, you know that uh, with the, with, the, with he starts mentioning the Pa race and the Solbar kind of puts it together. He puts the pieces together here, and he's like, "That's what you wanted these books for. You want to release the fire caves." And then Kai Win shanks him in the back. Uh, now, I, I love that she does this without the influence of Ducat. Like she, she really, does this, yeah, because he was he was going to like blow the lid off this whole thing, and she's like, "No, I won't lose power." And Solberg, you know, he, she is now a, like a true villain to me. Oh yeah, 
Yeah. She's fully crossed over. She kind of oh, did in the last episode, but now she really has. Uh, she, right? you, you, know, you, you, you crossed over in your loyal servant, the person who's been there forever, and no. Yeah. 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 Okay. Like she, she doesn't like try to knock him out, tie him up, convince him to join her. Or what? And no, she's like, no. And and only in the pursuit of her own power. That's it. There's no yeah. other and keeping reason. that power. Yeah. That's the only thing she cares about. Right. Um, like she kind of theoretically cared about the profits and all that before, but it was always secondary to her own ambition. And that's always been her yeah. defining trait. Right. And we see here that, but then she's going to destroy the book. And, but then the blood comes off the knife from Sobor and this sacrifice somehow ignites the spell of the, of this. So power this race. is good actually how this all came about. I, I, I believe, I, I believe it can believe believable, but I like, I like this. I like the blood igniting the book and then the story being there. It's, it's good. Yeah. It's very yeah. demonic, very I, biblical. I also, I also love when like she's saying, I need to destroy this book. Like, I'm not going to do this anymore, basically. But then the power is revealed and she's like, oh, no, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> basically. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. Ducat's oh, like, I mean, honestly, this is the most she's ever seen of something like, you know, metaphysical. I mean, something more than just yeah. her belief. Like, this If is... the prophets had just talked to her, I think like she could. Yeah, been, exactly. Exactly. But, you know, they're not going to do that, apparently. Uh, so now we have to go into their evil secrets eminence and she's in, she's totally in for this. So we'll catch up with them. I think that's a, their last scene in this episode. Um, uh, somehow I guess uh, those escape pods and everyone made it back to DJ's nine, not too worse for wear. You think they at least would have been taking prisoners of war? No, they just got out of there. Um, so, because I guess that's what the founder said, let, 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 yeah. them, let them escape. So, um, and, and, uh, Bill Ross says, I'll get you a new ship, Ben. It might take me a minute, but I'll get you a new ship. Um, because you know, the station's always been more important than the Defiant itself. But uh then just then Damar shows up on um, I guess on, on cable news or whatever he is on here. You know, he's broadcasting on subspace. Uh everyone's watching. He's like, guess what? Cardassia, we don't like the Dominion anymore. This sucks. And then uh we seven million Cardassians have died, and uh, the Dominion have conquered us, and this Breen stuff sucks. Yada yada. It's a yada, really yada. good speech. It's a really great speech. It is a good speech. I have uh, some of it here. Yeah, like I have, well, I, I have like, I have like the tail end of it here. Um, I call upon Cardassians everywhere. Resist, resist today, resist tomorrow, resist till the last Dominion soldier has been driven from our soil. Yeah. We shall fight them on the beach. In yeah, the it's kind of Churchill, eh? <laughs> Uh, we see here that like you know the Wayun and the founder and they're all watching it. There's even Cardassians in the room with. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> you don't think they'd be taken into custody right away? Like, <laughs> yeah, right. Because well, the, but that's the thing is I like Cardassia still is officially in the Dominion and the it, like. It's like it's but Damar is now has like a, a rogue faction, like a rogue government, and he's going off and doing his own thing. Um, and so it, the founder's just like kill them all, find the find the traitors and destroy them. Um, and uh, basically, Weyun tasks um, his Breen friend here, um, whatever his name is, Thought Glone or whatever, the general, uh, with doing it. Um, Kira then on D Space Nine confirms to Bill Ross and Cisco, yeah, yes, we did. It happened. Uh, the, the you know the the Rondek Four cloning facility of the Vorda has been destroyed, and the, and the and the and the Damar is uh, fighting against the Dominion, and. Um, and just then, um, you know, like they, they say, well, then we got help tomorrow any way we can. And that's going to be basically the story here, guys. So, I don't know, pretty good, you know, resist today, yeah, I... resist tomorrow, resist <laughs> thought gore. Yes, that's right. Viva la resistance. Um, so, I think I, this is a pretty good installment. I, okay, like I did, they was this worth, was destroying the Defiant worth it for you guys? Yeah, I, I I don't have, but I don't have the same attachment to the ships as you do. <laughs> <laughs> how about you, Adam? Are you sad to see the Defiant go on, on a scale one to ten? Like, how sad are you? I, I you know, we we'll talk about it in fun facts, but I, I think it's a it's a monumental moment for them to take that that um that that <clears throat> go that far on this uh, in the show to to destroy that ship because it means something to a lot of people, including you, David, clearly. So. Um, like yeah like it's it's a great ship it was one cisco designed himself and it goes out here a little 
too easily. Although Kevin says that's one thing he really liked about it, you know. So <laughs> maybe I'm the crazy one. I don't know, but uh, you know, it's it, to me like I'd rather the ship have survived um, the series. I would like well, to so, go out this way. But well, let me talk about what the uh, what's on. Um, where are we here? This is you want to get into your fun facts? Yeah, memory alpha here. But the episode marks the destruction of the USS Defiant. The decision to destroy the Defiant was not one taken lately, as Bear explains. The ship had uh, become a character. Oh, that's interesting. That had not that had caught on to people's uh, hearts and minds. Uh, the producers, however, felt that something was needed to give the Breen an impactful introduction. It was agreed that if nothing could achieve this quite as well as the destruction of the Defiant, as Bear said, we wanted to kill the Defiant to, as a statement of how tough the Breen were. Uh, we thought we would rock the characters and the audiences as well. I don't think they rocked the characters. I didn't find that at all. Like I, I thought they just brushed it off. It's another ship gun. Norman's saying it was powerful. And by now, it was a trekking to see a main ship be destroyed. We already saw the station way back in Visionary. Well, yeah, but th th that was undone. Like, it, you know, it's like, it's like I, if I could just interject here, Adam, for a second. Yeah, like, that was, that was like when... Um, like then they destroyed the enterprise and cause and effect over and over again. Like it, it came back to life at the end, you know, it wasn't destroyed forever. Um, no, but, but when you think of um, number seven, it's number seven generations when they destroyed the enterprise. I hated and, that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Like it was sad. And I was so glad when they brought it back in Star Trek Picard, I was like, 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 you know, even though it was just the saucer section that they salvaged. Um, yeah. It was something because that like, I like the ship is almost like a character in itself, you know, and to kill it, uh, you know, for me is like, man, like if you're going to kill a character, it's like really got to be worth it. And I guess it like, it does make the stakes of this war feel really detrimental and uh, you know, it kind of works, but I still hate it. <sighs> That's how I feel. Kevin, uh, I don't know. I don't really understand when people say that the things are characters in the show. They're not. They're things in the show. <laughs> so <laughs> everybody lived. The ship died. We're good. Yeah, every, no, no one dies except the ship. And there, I'm like, no, the ship. And obvi obviously, though, I'm the weird one because everybody says that and everybody no, 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 thinks no. that except for me <laughs> i really did like when the enterprise crashed and, and when they stopped and everything went forward it was kind of it was a good crash yeah yeah like i don't know, like 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 i i like when they destroyed the original enterprise in in uh star trek 3 like that's like maybe one exception where i was like that was worth it that was worth blowing up a ship in that way for a huge sacrifice to defeat the bad guy wow. or something like that and and you got a cool klingon bird of prey too like right and they, and they swap ships easier. you know and um like i almost wish they had destroyed the enterprise e in nemesis like that would have made that more impactful that movie like but instead <clears> they're like no we're gonna but apparently it gets destroyed later on so and we didn't even see it okay Sorry, adam all right, so Stephen Bear was a big fan of how this show mixes the larger war stories with the trivial domestic stories. We like the idea of showing a domestic life in in this episode. In the midst of all the pressure, it shows that Cisco is under. Uh, he has a lot of pressure under. He's under, and he still has issues at home. He's still a human being. Cassie burns his peppers. That hurts. This is what I don't care about. Uh, life is hard, but you know you shouldn't have your peppers burned, according to Stephen Bear. Peppers. Um, on the ongoing uh, Kai Wynn and Dukat plot in this episode, Bear comments, she experiences self-loathing and loss, and you wonder, okay, does she get it now? No, she does not. As soon as Dukat explains to her that she can uh, cover up the murder, it's clear the only thing she's worried it, the only that's the only thing she's worried about. But when the smoke clears, she's less tainted with than Dukat. Dukat is still the master, the manipulator, the liar, and they are quite a team. Yep, I agree. Actually, I'm very, I, I'm very curious right now where this is going with those two. Like, what's going to happen? I, I now I'm excited. With which which two? The Dukat the and uh, and Kai Wen. They're trying to release the Pa race to oh, destroy I know. the universe. Is this going to happen? I'm waiting to find out now. I, oh, I, you'll I, see, you're going to see. I know. I got to <laughs> stay in the cadence. It's like every Sunday I watch these. I can't can't yeah. break. Okay, <clears throat> in keeping with the redefinition of the character Damar that was taking place, the character Gol, Gol, Gol Rasat was uh, created specifically to help sell the idea that Damar could handle the volatile situation he was getting himself into. 
as Bear explains, we needed someone who would highlight uh, Demar's strength by uh, by putting Demar in a position where we'd have to hold uh, his this tiger in, by the tail and keep him in line. And I, I believe that. I, I think that you, he, this character has completely changed in two episodes. Demar, yeah, he's complete. Yeah. The flip, it's it's such a it's he goes from bad guy to good guy, like or anti hero, whatever how you want to classify. But weak, him. weak as well. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, and I do like the introduction of the Gull Rousset character. I think he's a good like um, uh, pairing here for Demar because he he feels like you know like another scummy Cardassian who would totally be happy to conquer the galaxy if it was good for Cardassia, but because it's not good for Cardassia anymore now, you know it's it just sells this this idea because like the Cardassians are not turning here on the Dominion because they they're like oh we don't like how the Dominion does things they would love to do it the way that the Dominion does things they just don't like that they're not in charge right so yeah. they're still bad right <laughs> like but they're but they're now um allies like they're now just natural allies uh throughout the, throughout the force into this war strange bedfellows strange you know. bedfellows yeah exactly Um, just thinking, I was a bit, if you got any more, Dave, I, other than that, I'm pretty good for tonight. Yeah. Okay. Well, just, uh, before we get into our final, um, Oh, I, I have a question. Do you guys know how many times, uh, San Francisco has been destroyed in the whole Star Trek? Well, world? this was, this seems like the worst one of all of them, I would say. Um, like it was, it's definitely been, uh, like I think that this would be the more significant attack. It looked like of all the ones because like the one with the whale probe. I don't know. That it seemed like they everyone made it through like out of that one more. Well, made Picard, a Picard they lost a building with people in it. Picard, there was there was that Strange one in like worlds too, right? In the, in the in Star Trek Into Darkness, they yeah. they blow up that that place in London, right? But that's a yeah, but no Strange New Worlds though. This that that big big giant ship crashed into the city. Stranger Worlds? No, Stranger New Worlds. No, um, uh, Into Darkness. Into, into darkness. darkness. But that's yeah. another universe. True. Like, right. So, um, Davin's saying Star Trek Three kind of sucked. Why would you say Star Trek Three kind of sucked? Because uh, it does. It doesn't. It's good. You know no, what? It kind of sucks. You, I thought it sucked back whenever it was came out, like 30, 40 years ago. I like it now. I, I, I watched it about three weeks ago. It still sucks. Really? I, I like it. I, I, I like it more than I ever did before. I'm with you, Adam. Like, it's a good one. It's like, you know, maybe, I, um, maybe I'll give Gary 7 a shot now. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, Take wait, some time, wait. Dave. You, gotta, you know, cross your 40s. So therefore, <laughs> I'd uh, argue the story was far more worthy of destroying a ship before. Eh, I guess so. Um, it's a little ship. Which is oh, worse, yes. Wonder Three? Oh, Star, Star Trek One is way worse than Star Trek Three. Like, oh yes, it's, like, it's not even close. It's not, it's not even, even close. Even. Yeah, it's yeah. You know, I will like, never watch the first one again. Ever. Yeah, it's it's unwatchable. <laughs> it's, it's so it's, unwatchable. It's so bad. Okay, well, guys, we've we we must digress. We must get into the um the episode here ratings, uh, as we say, and, uh, and 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 put a score on this. Davin has already given us a nine out of ten to out start 10? this off. Um. Yes. So, boom. Bring it up. Okay. I will go in. Uh, I like this a little more, although I'm sad they destroyed the Defiant, but I get it. I'm more okay with them destroying the Defiant than killing Jadzia. So, uh, yes, because Jadzia is a character. Correct. And a ship is a thing. Right. <laughs> so, I, I got my priorities right. <laughs> you know, person, object, object. <laughs> but, you know, as a name, you call her a, a she. Uh, so I'm going to go. I'll give this an eight. That's good. Uh, to Adam. Yeah, I, I, this is the most excited I've been about Deep Space Nine this whole season. So I'm giving this a 10. I can't wait for next week. Okay, a 10. Uh, Kevin. Yeah, I'm not going to hold back either. 10. 10. Wow. Uh, okay. Now, um, one someone said here that they were missing um Jamil. He said no, they said no puffy taco, no buy. They're not they're not sticking it around with Jamil. Sorry. I'd love to have Jamil here, but he's can't often make this time. Oh, Davin says he's changed his mind. He's giving this a 10. Perfect. Good man. <laughs> Good man. Come um, on, Dave. Peer pressure. I'm leaving it at an eight. It's okay. <laughs> it doesn't like it's pretty you killed good. The defiant off, Kevin. They killed the Defiant. I'm supposed to be happy? They no. killed the Defiant. 
I'm supposed to be pleased about this? No. No, oh, it's, uh, I can't, you know, I can't go with that there. Hashtag, where's Jeff? Uh, I'm not sure about that one. Where's Jody? Uh, Jody's up north in Sudbury, I believe. He has, where he's on business. Uh, and Davin, Davin's, he's you know, in the hour, comments. Davin's hour, lurking. He's lurking. Davin's lurking. Jamil, Jamil's out in the world somewhere. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, so for this episode tonight, guys, this is uh, averaging a nine and a half for us. Uh, pretty good. I think it may be our best score this season, maybe. Uh, yeah, looks like this is yeah. our top episode so far. Uh, only uh, surpassing, it's only a paper moon by 0.2% um so anyway uh let's look ahead to the next episode uh it is called when it rains um and this one um well i guess uh the dominion has deployed a new weapon that can disable starships and only the klingons have been made resistant to it that's right so we find out that the, it's now up to the klingons to fight the breen by themselves uh and the, and the romulans and the star the starfleet have to pull back here so that leads to a whole thing here we get more kai win of course and D ducat doing more evil stuff with the paw race um oh and then we this is the we'll also get the, the the start of like finding out that odo um has been infected with this disease as well and that will start to that plot line will start to go and we'll get more with damar and the resistance in the next episode too so is cassidy so, gone on her on her voyage i hope cassidy i don't think she is she in this next episode uh i don't think she's even in it yeah she's not she's not in, she's not doesn't look she she appears in the next episode at all use her use a break from her Oh, and Gowron is going to show up in this next. What? Episode. Oh yes. man! Uh, uh, what? No, that's not it. It's. <laughs> <laughs> so get ready for some Robert O'Reilly. He's showing up. Um, man, is this the one where they? <sighs> yeah. Uh, and Garrick, we get some more Garrick coming into this because Garrick, with this whole oh, like yeah. Cardassian resistance, Garrick is going to become very important in the end game here, uh, Adam. Okay. So. Don't tell me anymore. I won't. All right. Um, so if you didn't know, uh, we're, well, we got five more episodes of the show to review, uh, including the one we just mentioned. Also, we're on Thursdays, we are doing new uh, episodes of Star Trek Discovery Season 5. Who's just got their first two episodes out. We got Season um, Episode 3 coming up um, this Thursday. It's called Janal. I believe they're going to Trill in this next episode. So check that out. Uh, Adam, will you be with us for that? Yeah. I Great. will be. Um, Look out for that. Uh, I think uh, Davin has a few different podcasts set up in the next couple of days. Uh, he is doing a Locutors of Trek um, uh, like interview with Art with uh, Jenny R. Johnson. Uh, also, we have a that's going to be on April 11th at 8 p.m. And we also have uh, a debate nine coming up here. Isolinear Chips Shoulders, uh, April 19th. That will be taking place at 8 p.m. Look out for that. I'm on yeah, that one. Yeah. And last night, as mentioned, we had our Star Trek Radio Theater. Uh, Adam was was Worf, uh, who thought he was the captain. It was really funny, actually. Uh, I enjoyed it. Um, Kevin was doing uh, Dr. Crusher, who was on her, in her quarters with her candles. And uh, I was... I don't even know what I, I I figured out later that I was like I was like what voice was I doing? Uh, it was like a like, cross between Elmo and Mickey Mouse. Yeah, I think I was like I, I played in Star Trek Online during the the holiday season. There's like these gingerbread characters that come to life in the Q's Winter Wonderland, and they have to fight the evil snowmen who uh, hate sugar or something like that. Anyway, so the, the that's how these gingerbread men talk. They go. Ah! we have to protect ourselves from the evil uh, snowman and that's kind of what i was doing last night uh kind of sound like mr hanky yeah a little hanky <laughs> yeah you could all these all the spirit of all of those things was running through it um so check out all that of course the united federation of podcasts all kinds of great different podcasts coming out like the graphic histories podcast uh x-rated which is like the uh x-men the animated review show where they do uh x-men 97 right now you got hold up uh, with the, doing movie reviews, David and Murphy, the Super Mater Brothers podcast, where we're covering right now Survivor, season 46, if you can believe it, going into the merge. Eamon, my son, doing music reviews called Eamon on Track, and the Hellbound podcast. Michael Chan, talk about horror with Alex Blackburn. Uh, and the newcomer, Stephen uh, Waters and Jason Phillips. Uh, we had we had Stephen on the radio theater with us last night. Uh, he was, he was good. He was, yeah, really he, was, good. he was good, yeah. And with all that, uh, guys, I think we'll uh, leave you with a sound clip here. Uh, uh, 
let's go let's go out with this uh way telling us about those breen you know those refrigeration suits they were in the bathroom i'm sure you've read the intelligence reports that say that their home world is a frozen wasteland well it's not climate on their home planet is quite comfortable then why do they wear refrigeration suits they won't say you see what i mean they're full of surprises see you next time everybody <laughs>